What's up? What's up? Fox Body Rehab fans. Guys, I want to talk about something that you might know a little bit about. So, we're going to use this car for example. Blue Balls or Blue Angel or Blue Devil after today's work. So, I'm practically finished with it. I'm selling the car. I don't I mean, I like it, but I don't love it. I mean, I got enough, I got enough stuff going on that I don't, I don't need the car. You know, now that it's running and driving, I hate running and driving things. I take running and driving apart. Um, I like it better than taking apart. You know, it's more fun to, to start from scratch and then build your way up. But anyway, what I want to address today is the gremlins, the demons, the stupid things that pop up that are inevitable in every major build. And I'm calling this a major build because I changed out all the suspension, all the brake system. I added the motor, the transmission. I added the interior i added the entire engine bay components i added the lights i put it together the front clip and i mean everything you know for for intensive purposes this is pretty much a not ground up but damn i mean everything else so in the process of putting it all together i'm chasing down little demons you know i wanted to make sure all the lights work you know because people like those you know people like to be able to signal when they turn and so does the inspection uh, before you can get it registered so i wanted to make sure that all that stuff functioned and man lo and behold i had a couple different issues one of them i've i've had before so I was ready for it. Uh, occasionally, now keep in mind, I have a huge collection of lights, bulbs, things of the sort. So when I attack a project, I don't have to run to the auto parts house. I can literally just go to a shelf and pick them up. Well, I think what I keep pulling out of my shelf is a 9495 headlights or something. And I don't even know, man. But basically what it boils down to is the, uh, the, uh, the symptom is when you power on the lights, you have no low beams but functioning high beams. And when you turn off the high beams, you have a high beam indicator that stays on. Okay, so I've already tracked this down one time at great time expense, and I found out that I, in fact, had the wrong bulbs in the car. So what I figured out is, you know what, I'm just going to replace all the bulbs again. Even though I just put them all in the car, I'm going to make sure, you know. So I go down to the auto parts house, and I buy brand new light bulbs. And lo and behold, they work great. I plugged them in. They're perfect. They work great. Highs, lows. They're flawless as they're supposed to operate. So thank God for prior experience. I addressed that issue and it worked like a champ. Uh, I think, uh, what do we got here? I think some 9004s was our dude. Um, if I'm not mistaken, I might already threw away the junk. Old Vato zone here. I went to, oh, 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 they were out of stock and they didn't have them. Okay, 9004s. So that's the 9004s fit the bill for the headlights and that's a flawless operation. But I ran into another problem. Now, I have hazard lights. They work perfectly, just like they should, uh, but my blinkers. So I turn on my blinkers, and all four of my lights flash. So I turn on my left hand. I get all four of my lights like my hazards are on, and I went through everything. I mean, I checked the bulbs. I replaced the bulbs. I went through all of it that I could. I checked multifunction switch. Matter of fact, I checked three multifunction switches because I'm running used products, and hey, there could be a problem. Then I pulled down my fuse panel. I checked all of that back, forth, in and out. My ignition switch, which causes is, is issues too. Um, I literally tore the whole damn thing apart and went through it all. All of it. And I'm still, you know, I've got to put it all back together. But all that work, I've spent damn near all day playing this game. And come to find out, throughout all of the work that I did, there was a very simple explanation to my problem. And it came down to... I was doing a burnout, which I like to do when I get him to run, and my power steering cap blew off the reservoir, and it soaked my freshly cleaned engine compartment in transmission fluid, all right? So, I mean, this whole side was just drenched in tranny fluid, or power steering fluid, however you want to look at it. Uh, so I degreased it again, and then I washed it again, and I put quite a bit of water into the engine bay. You know, I'll admit, I've done it a million times before. Some people will say, oh, you can't. I don't care what you say, man. I've done it a million times before. You get the distributor cap covered, and then when you take it off, you blow it out, you put some WD in there. Everything usually works like a champion, uh, except this time so i pulled apart the connectors here they go for the um they go for the headlight harness and man it was full of water so every time i would hit my blinker that would cross over and make a circuit completed for the entire um blinker assemblies and so it wasn't sending one signal to one side it was sending one signal to the entire uh harness obviously that's bad right i mean it doesn't hurt anything except my ego pride and time frame uh however after addressing that issue i just figured you guys would get a kick out of something so stupid i mean here's the uh, here's the one side of it it connects right here on the side of your strut tower and that's where all of your your harnesses for the headlight actually joins into the rest of the dash harness in order to link all that together so after all that time 
that's my solution. So when I pulled that, that off and disconnected my headlight harness, taillights uh, functioned perfectly. The blinkers worked left, blinkers worked right as they were supposed to. Um, so what I've nailed it down to is that that harness, which I'm letting dry now, I've blown it out with compressed air, I've put WD in it and then blew it back out again. I mean, I'm going to make sure it's entirely dry, but I know 100% now without any question that my problem is 100% the headlight harness. And so even if I connected this back up and found that I still had an issue, it's no big deal from this point to go through and swap it out with another one that I have laying around or inspect it to find if I have a brake and a jumper. But that was my diagnosis to finally figure out the root of the issue. So I'm 99% positive it's going to be right there at that plug. Once it dries, everything will function flawlessly. However, if it gives me one more bit of problem, I'm yanking the whole goddamn thing out and replacing it with another one out of another car that hasn't been touched yet uh, just to eliminate any more pro probability of me spending uh, hours, yeah, hours playing with something so stupid. But it's nice to know what the issue is. I mean, how many times you chase down and you go to bed pissed off and you think about it all night long? I bet, I, oh, I should try it. Oh, I should Google. So finally, after all of this, it comes down to something so foolish. And I mean, when I tell you I have been through this thing all day today trying to find the, the root of this issue, something so stupid and so important at the same time. So guys, I mean, this is small victories. I celebrate every little one I can, especially when something has frustrated me so bad. So I spent my day in here with the door chime going while my key was on so I could power up the blinkers to track down and test and test light and hit, oh my, Lanta, finally finally that's sorted so now got all that done and one last hilarious thing that you may or may not appreciate uh so uh i turned on the the havoc controls and i've got nothing but defrost and if you're a fox body guy a mustang guy in general and this goes for some other brands as well but there's one quick fix if you get into a mustang and you have no uh, blower coming out of your vents or your floor. It's all defrost. Nine times out of 10, it's the vacuum line, the black one that comes from the Havat panel and goes through the firewall into the actual little canister and then into or your little valve and then into the, um, the vacuum tree. So typically it has a break in it somewhere and it's not connected and that will blow only out of the defrost and you will have no controls with it anywhere else. So sure enough, I uh, turn it on and I've got defrost only. So now I'm extra mad because I've already chased this down. I already fixed that vacuum leak. I couldn't understand uh, for the life of me what had happened. Had I gotten aggressive? Did I disconnect in the dashboard? And I went through it all. And then I thought about it for a second and I'm thinking, God, you know, the car needs vacuum in order to activate and I haven't even started this car, and I've been playing with it. So I fired it off, which it starts right up, and damn, if you know, it comes right out of the vent. So I took apart the Havac system for nothing. So even me, a guy that's played with these cars for decades and has had hundreds, if not well over a thousand of these damn things, and have done all this before, always gets stumped on something stupid. And this is stupid. I mean, heck, I didn't have a problem putting a motor, a transmission, a rear end, and a front suspension underneath of it. I didn't have a problem redoing the entire braking system and putting in a booster and master cylinder. Nah, no problems doing a whole interior even. I mean, none of those issues. But wouldn't you know it, something so foolish would take up so much time. But heck, I'm looking at it as a, a victory. I beat it. I beat it. Now I know. All I got to do is put the car back together now, and I've got all the functioning lights. So now... It's on to what, one more stage. Tomorrow I'm hoping to get down and get the alignment done. As you can see here, uh, this is all the way to this side and this isn't, I mean, the wheel is kind of cocked. It's the tops in, toes in or out, however you want to look at it. And I know that I could adjust it. Sure, I could put a floor jack under it and I could get it close with an eyeball and a tape measure, but why? I mean, I got one of the best guys in the game 10 minutes away from me. Uh, old Pops Alignment. If you're familiar with the Tomball Magnolia Pinehurst area of North Houston, there is a guy named, he goes by Pops and Pops Alignment is cold with it i mean he does he specializes in the crap that most people don't want to do if you've ever taken your modified vehicle to a place to get an alignment done and you saw the frightened look on the 17 year old kids that's doing the work uh when he looks at these things he's what are these guys what is that i don't know uh yeah this guy loves it loves the lifted and lowered he does uh fantastic work so i'm not even gonna mess with it i'm gonna load it onto my trailer drive the 10 minutes drop it off there with him let him do his magic and then i'll drive it home with a perfect perfect alignment. Uh, all the suspension's been checked. Tie rods are good. Ball joints are good. Everything is nice and tight, so it shouldn't be a problem getting the alignment done at all. Um, once that alignment's finished up, I've got to still charge the air conditioning system, and I'm pretty sure I'm going to have to do a water pump 
I'm not 100% sure. I mean, I saw it was pumping while I had the cap off, so I knew I had pressure, but then I let it idle again, and I was getting no uh, heat buildup. The motor was getting warm, but I was getting no heat buildup into the hoses. So that's still yet to address. Um, uh, <laughs> water pumps on old Fox bodies, I hate them because nine times out of ten, you're going to end up with a broken bolt. And five times out of those nine, you're going to end up with a bolt broken so bad, you're going to take timing cover off of it too. And is it a difficult job? No, it's not. But it's not one of my favorites. I mean, I don't, I hate ripping apart the front of the motor to go after all of that stuff. I mean, it's necessary because when it's done, I'll put a new thermostat in it, new gaskets in it, and all the bolts like they're supposed to be. But I don't want to, you know what I mean? I don't want to. Can't it just work? My buddy says when I put the motor in, he goes, well, what do you think? I said, well, most times I do one of these, and I pull one of my motors out that I've had in a car for a while. It's almost like a boat motor. The water pumps are almost always going to be faulty. You know, they're going to leak. If they sit still for too long, the, the impeller isn't going to do what its job needs to do, and it, it's going to have a leak. It's not going to build pressure. And uh, My buddy says, you're going you're gonna to put one on there real quick? No, absolutely not. There's a 20% success rate, and I'm going to roll the dice. And I don't know why I do that, because it's not 20%. It's about 5 But I took the chance, and it was doing Going good for a while and I noticed a little bit of water underneath the car while it sat not a lot but a little and that's really kind of final frontier stuff so what I'm trying to do here is I'm making a lazy man special so many people you see posted all the time they're like man you know I would love I would love a turnkey car I want I want no projects I want a 30 year old car that doesn't need nothing I want to get in. I want to drive it. I want to take it to the cruise ins and the car shows and stand by it with pride like I built it, but I didn't. I bought it. So the lazy man special is what this is going to be. All right. This isn't for the guys that do this kind of work. All right. This right here, this is for a special kind of retards. It takes a special kind of retard to take a nice 93 Cobra apart to make it perfect. You know, most people ain't about that life. Most people want to jump in a car and turn key and go like it's a 2020 Honda Civic. Well, hell, I'm going to give them that, you know? I'm going to make a lazy man special and I'm going to charge them for it. They're going to pay heavy. I'm going to I'm going to retail the piss out of this car because it will need little to nothing when I'm done. I might leave door strikers, you know? Heck, so somebody can have pride and feel like they did something. They can put floor mats in it, you know, to give it that personal touch. But this is what we're going to do. Lazy man special. And they're going to pay for the privilege. Well, guys, I just wanted to celebrate a little over, a little uh, accomplishment that I had. Uh, finally, I mean, it feels good to at least know. I hate wondering. There's so many things that could possibly be. And after painstakingly going through the whole dang process to find out something so foolish was the issue, it just seems to happen to me more often than not. And for you guys that do stuff like this, you'll know exactly what I'm talking about. And the pride that you take when you accomplish it and beat the project or the challenge that you were trying to face. So no longer will I go to bed. Last night I went to bed. I was upset. I was angry. Felt like I had been bested by this old car and I'll be damned if I'm going to let one of these things beat me. And sure enough, it was sure trying. So to have overcome this is a, it's nice. It's Sunday night. I'm going to now have peace. I'm going to sleep well, knowing that tomorrow everything will be good on that. And I can go on to the next step of this. So guys from Fox body rehab, um, and to strict specifically you guys that are doing these cars from scratch or doing these jobs, uh, the wiring and the, the stuff that most people are scared of. I want to say, man, good for you, bro. Good for you. Uh, it takes a special kind of person to endure the frustration that's involved with a job of this sort. And there are a lot of you guys out there that do it frequently, man. And I want to give you props, dude. From Fox Body Rehab, I want to say good for you guys, man. Keep it up. You guys are the real drive behind the passion of these cars, man. It's not the turnkey lazy man. It's not the guy that buys one done. Whenever you see somebody posting up looking for a finished project, I laugh every time, dude. I laugh every time because I can just picture him standing at that car show, at Cars and Coffee, sitting there when people people say, man, that's a nice car. And a guy says, thank you. He didn't say, thank you. I bought it. He says, thanks, man. It's mine. You know, I, I did this. I bought this car. It's mine. I built it. Uh, okay, bro. I won't tell nobody when I see it pop up on Facebook and you, you play pimping in it. I won't say nothing to nobody, man, when you are advertising it like you did something for it. Good for you guys, man. The lazy man needs to be wealthy because that's an expensive taste, man. The rest of us poor bastards, we just got to do all the work so that y'all can look good, man. So from the uh, poor bastard to the lazy man, 
one of you will have this car very quickly. I don't expect to have this for another week, probably. I mean, I could have cut loose. I tried to. I put it up there for little stuff need to finish, and like I'm attaching right now, and I put it up there for about two grand less than I expected to, and I figured for sure some working man would want to knock this out seeing how easy the project, but no, no, I got a bunch of, is this available? Will you take three grand for what, dude, a roller? Absolutely not. I'll sit on this thing forever, man. Guy's like, oh, you think it's gold? I think it's what it is and if it doesn't do that then i'll put it out there in my field next to the other 30 and forget about it until it is worth that much i don't really care i know what the market is i know what it'll bring um so let it sit or let it go one way or another dude either way um it was still fun to play with well guys happy sunday happy new year this is uh, i think my first post of the 2021 so happy new year to you guys man i hope that 2021 is extremely prosperous for every single one of you i hope you guys are healthy man you're doing well um stay safe guys keep building these cars don't be afraid fox body rehab we appreciate what you do Happy New Year, Fox Body Rehab fans. Guys, we made it to 2021. But did 2021? Hmm. Here we are. All right. Lots of videos in this car. This one's going to be focused on one specific thing. Removing the headlight harness entirely from the car. Uh, for my reason is, is someone hacked into it. They've got additional wires from some other kind of addition that's no longer there. It, they have power. Um, I turn on my blinkers, both lights light up. That's no window. So I've inspected everything else and we're good. I've narrowed it down. So now what this is going to be about is specifically, like I said, headlight harness. The whys, that'll come in with a longer video about the car. But it's mainly because power and ground wire on each side. I don't know where they go. I mean, I'm sure it was some kind of stupid ass, maybe a HID power or who knows? Who knows? God bless the 90s and 2000 era and what we did to these cars. Anyway, what I do know is that the entire thing has been taped up. Somebody did that. Somebody rebuilt the entire harness. And I had it in my hands and I probably should. This was all tucked up. None of this was existing when I got the car. So uh, I ran it all and it's installed properly. The grounds were where they were at, nice and clean, good grounds everywhere. Uh, the issue was is that um, I would turn on my parking lights and one blinker would work, one wouldn't. And it's all related to the front. Uh, another thing I thought was going to be my problem is that I did um, have a power steering cap come off of my pump during a little... Um, speed exhibition in the parking lot aka burnout and um it ejected a lot of the fluid out onto the harnesses and everything and so when i narrowed it down to my problem being in the headlight harness i took apart the connections and found out that that dude right there that goes into that dude right there and then that dude the green dude he goes down here to this dude right sure that's in the front strut behind the battery normally well i pulled it apart and it was full of moisture and yeah, probably I degreased it and cleaned it afterwards like I'd done a million times. But this led me to find out my problem. So once I thoroughly dried that and eliminated that completely as the issue, the culprit, even though it had moisture in it, um, unless it fried it out completely, which is unlikely from the backside, uh, my problem lies in the aftermarket tape job and addition wiring. So I'm going to be extracting it. And how I do this, kill the battery, of course, get it out of the car because you're going to not only need the battery out, but you're going to need the tray removed. You're going to need the air box assembly pulled back, removed. The harness for the headlights come all the way to the, the alternator. So you're going to have to unplug, which I've already done here. So you're going to have to unplug these dudes and then pull the harness underneath the frame rail. And definitely I'm going to, this is next step for me as I'm taking this box, this air box assembly out so that I can have free reign to the wiring. And then I'm going to extract it. So really it's easy from here. Disconnect the lights and then pull off the radiator supports, those mounts there, the brackets. We're going to pull those and then that will give me the harness that is just right here. Now, OEM factory utilizes these holes right there where you see that zip tie. This is a better example without the zip tie. So they use those holes with push pins on the factory loom. Well, when you get a car that's been changed up as much as this one has, there's no, dude, those only come out once. They barely go in. On the 93 Cobras and the Celines, absolutely, they will have the OEM clips. This guy, zip ties work like a champion. So we're going to cut those brand new zip ties off because, you know, conserving. And then those brackets. And once we've got to this point and get into this area, 
we have, I believe, a horn and maybe the uh, power for the windshield washer reservoir, I believe, is connected to the same harness and a ground. Follow the harness back. You'll see it. So basically start there to identify the harnesses and then disconnect them and extract them. So once I pull the battery tray, I'll have this, this, this wire literally laying right here, um, no longer going all the way around the car. So I'll have it laying right here and it'll be a cakewalk to extract it from here. Once I've got that done, I'm gonna put it up on the table, throw some light on it, clean it up thoroughly, and I'm gonna cut all the tape off of it. So I need to see what's underneath of there and what they did to it. If it's too hacked up, I will just go ahead and replace it. Honestly, I was thinking I had a socket issue, uh, but I do have some donor cars that I can easily pick the, the correct model your harness and in install that if necessary. So first I'm going to try to save it and if it's not salvageable then tomorrow first thing I'm going to go ahead and replace it with another one that I have to go through on this, the same level to make sure that it's not damaged before I install it. Uh, so there, there it is. Uh, really guys I'm going to do a two part probably. I'm going to do a follow up once I get the harness out completely. I'll show you anything along the way that have been the problem but you're going to take those seven millimeter bolts that hold on those ground straps off the car uh that's definitely going to hold up the harness if you don't and then literally this thing's going to fall out nothing's holding it in except probably luck and gravity a lot of the cars i've had these aren't even installed the wiring harness is just literally tucked in behind the radiator so i expect total job to remove it from the time i started to the time i finished minus this video probably 30 minutes maybe max that's taking my time and making sure that i'm inspecting everything around it as i go just to not have one more issue so here we go uh now i'm going to start doing some labor all right, as promised, when I got back, I was going to tell you that I was going to have all this wiring laid across the front of the car. Okay, what did I did? How did I did it? Okay, once I pulled it out of the alternator, like I said I was going to, then took the air box out. There's the top. The uh, bottom's over on the table. By the way, guys, tables, set yourself up a workspace, man. It'll make it so much less stressful if you can. Dedicate some, a specific area, not on the ground where the kids are kicking it and the dogs. Okay, rant over. And also, always put your hardware back in the locations of uh, when you disassemble it makes it so much quicker to put it back together nobody wants to lose bolts and nuts went ahead and got it out of there took those out the brackets so that i could get to the wiring between the radiator and the core support there and got all the way to this the, to the front end now at the front end uh well so far i mean on the outside it doesn't look bad but i know i've got some customizing under there so that's all the evidence i need to cut it apart Connectors look good, so I think I can save it. We'll find out shortly. Everything unplugged, everything unbolted. Um, there's one, the green wire here came off the solenoid. And guys, don't get scared of these solenoids because they're not, everything goes on one, pl one plug except the one that goes to the starter on the other side. Everything goes on one, all right? And it's the one to the right, one to the left, run your starter. And then of course, your little wire for your ignition. If you're scared, do like whoever did this wiring harness did, and they put tape and wrote down every single piece. God bless them. I think I remember doing that in the beginning, but not anymore, luckily. The problem that I ran into here is that the connector is gone, and somebody has put in, looks, I bet, going to be a butt-in connector or something underneath of this. And this is, a, it looks like the ground here attached to the harness. That's it. Like that's the only thing keeping the harness into the car. Everything else is ready to go. So I'm gonna cut that, and I figure I'll upgrade it anyway because whatever work was done underneath there, I didn't do. So I'll get a good opportunity to look at it and make sure it's connected properly. So that's what uh, that's what I got. So once I cut that out, I'm gonna clean some space on my dedicated work area, and I'm going to put that over there with a razor blade. I'm gonna slice all of the tape off, and my hands will be black and sticky for a couple of days. It's disgusting work. Uh, but it needs to be done because i got to have lights. Well, guys, bear with me. I'm going to put it on the table and uh, probably update once I cut it open. So, so far, so good. A couple of plugs, really nothing major. All stuff that unclips, unplugs. And it took maybe, maybe 10 minutes. I way over-exaggerated the time frame. It was, there's really nothing to it. A couple of pieces come off and then that thing's laying in this position just like that. And honestly, I've done them in this position. I've actually cut them apart while they're still in the bay somewhat and so that I could test it because that's how, obviously, once I get it ready, I'll plug it in, you know, on the table and see if it powers up on that. And if so, then it's worthy of the install. Well, guys, uh, thanks for staying with me. And if you're watching this video because uh, you searched the keywords that got you here for headlight harness, man, no, you're pissed off, huh? This job sucks.
troubleshooting electrical. Definitely not one of my strong points. I don't enjoy it very much at all. I'm more of a replace the harness kind of guy, but in this instance, I think I can fix this one and uh, keep it going. Stay tuned, we'll find out. Okay, slight change of pants. So uh, after looking at it and realizing that, man, it's gonna take 65 feet of electrical tape that I might not have right now. Anyway, um, I decided to take a walk upstairs to my rack and see what I had, and uh, I found this. Pretty cool. The cool thing about this is that um, it is the exact same 87 to 89, and it is complete with the exception of two wires. No big deal. So we've got, uh, where does that do that? Let's see. Right here. So these two wires. Which is no worries because we already had cut this one. That's the ground that we were talking about earlier that was cut on this on the old harness which, right there. And so basically, um, I'm assuming, I'll find out, but I'm assuming this wire is going to be the power wire to the solenoid. Everything else is in play. I mean, you can see it's obviously untaped in these areas, which I'll address. Um, mainly what I'm going to do now is, uh, for the sake of time, is I'm going to go ahead and make the repairs on these two wires uh, and plug the system in and ground it out. And so basically, instead of ohming every wire out like I've done, I'm going to go ahead and shortcut it and see if I can just uh, rely on good old Ford. I mean, it doesn't look to be modified other than the cuts, and the cuts are typical um, for, for the extraction. Inevitably, somebody gets lazy, they get out there in the field or they get wherever, and um, they don't have the tools to do that, you know, and they just slice and dice. I mean, you saw that ground had to be done, but this one right here could have been unscrewed from the solenoid. No major situation. I don't like too many connectors put into a harness. Uh, I got a rule. You tap around five of them and it's time for a replacement harness or to rebuild it. Anyway, that's a change in plans. Instead of taking this one completely apart and, and rebuilding it, I am now going to steal the solenoid power and a little bit of that ground probably and install it, run lights and see what happens. I mean, if it solves my problem, then I'll just clean it up really well and tape it back up and rock it. So wish me luck. Uh, I'm trying to save time, which means it's going to take me triple what it would have just to redo it but i liked the hardly so we'll see <laughs> stay tuned happy news happy news so check it out no more of the four-way flashes when i turn on my blinkers thanks to the uh, replacement of that harness so first of all you turn left you get left you turn right you get right and we're working all the way around so bam and bam, come to find out the wiring harness that was in the car was no bueno. Had a lot of work done to it, so replaced the entire engine harness. Got that sorted out. Or not engine, sorry, that's a headlight harness. So we got that sorted out. Addressed some issues with some drivability, uh, vacuum leaks, a little stuff like that to get a good idle on her. She revs up quick. Yes, 85 mile an hour speedometer. This is a 1988 car, even though it's got all black interior in it. So in order to get the right speedometer, uh, I didn't have that 1989 140 mile an hour speedometer. I had to settle for this. So that's what I got. But gauges function, lights work, hazards function, all that stuff, even brights, the bright indicator comes on. Everything's working like it's supposed to. The headlights got those replaced to the proper ones. So now all those function too. But now, even found the old factory radio to put in there with that her shifter. Voila. That's a car. Well, guys, if you're trying to solve headlight or blinker issues, hope this video can be of some assistance to you. Leave a thumbs up, share, subscribe. Uh, try to do as many help, helpful how-tos as I possibly can as I go through working on these things all the time. And I mean, all the time. They just never seem to be a shortage. So stay tuned. Thanks for watching, guys.